Hello, doctor. How are you? I'm good. How are you? I'm fine. Thank you. We are, we are so happy to, to have you today with us. So actually, just let me, in less than one minute, just brief you with this um, program. I started last March, and the, the aim of the program is to disseminate EBA to parents and therapists in Middle East. We actually um, completed about 14 uh, sessions before. We discussed different topics, and we, we are so happy that today we will be having something that is very important and related to uh, uh, play interventions or interventions based on, on play. Yes, so you can start just, yeah. Oh, it says I can't share my screen. Yeah, okay. I will, I will share, I, I will share the, okay. Should, should I share, you, you, you want to share your screen or I share the, the Either one, the... you can share the slides I sent you, but I think I just sent you the PDF file so the videos won't work, but I can send yeah. you the um, PowerPoint real quick if you want. Yes, you can send it and you yeah, just, uh, while yeah. while you are presenting, you just give me some time to translate also to Arabic. So uh, lots of people can can uh, can benefit also. I don't know if this will go through on or not, but let's see. All right, I just sent it to you. I don't know if the Arabic version has the videos actually. Mm. I forget. But it's okay if you want to take the if you want to take the the share that's fine also. Okay, yeah, the Arabic one doesn't have the videos, so it's um either way. Okay, <laughs> let me go ahead and share. Yeah. Okay. Oh, just... Yeah. If you want to share the Arabic slides, we could. The biggest issue is just the videos, so I would have to still share to show the videos. I think. My God. Uh, okay. Okay. So yeah, okay, just let me share the because still there are some people who, who I need to admit at, in the waiting room. So it's better if I just share the Arabic and then you can explain, I will translate also. Yeah. Okay. I think we'll still, the main thing though, um, Amir, is I have some videos that need to be played. Okay. And, yeah, okay. and so, they're not uh, in the PowerPoint, like they're not in this yeah. version of the PowerPoint. So so now I will give you the share. That is, will be the okay. best solution. Yeah, and then we can, we can also download the video from the Facebook Live, so that's fine also. Yeah. So I just then, give you the host. I'm putting, for yes, people I'm, that are on Zoom, I'm putting the presentation. Mm. <laughs> so the yeah, Arabic okay. presentation is there for those that want to look yeah, at okay. it. And then I'll be able to show the videos on my end. Yeah, def definitely. Okay. And just you just give me some time to translate also. Okay. So that is, will be, yeah. Thank you. All right. <laughs> so hi, everyone. It's great to see you all. I am Dr. Megan DeLeon Miller, and I am presenting today on effective play-based and child-centered ABA intervention. We might not get through all of the slides, but we'll do the best we can. I tend to talk a lot, and with translation, it <laughs> can kind of slow things down. So. Yeah, okay. يس فقلت لكم النهاردة إن شاء الله رح نتكلم على إزاي نستخدم اللعب كتدخل سلوكي مع الطلاب ليكسبهم بعض المهارات يمكن مش هنقدر نروح لكل السلايدز اللي موجودة في الشرائح لكن هنحاول نشرح يعني الجزء الأكبر منه So the first topic when we look at play-based intervention is learning a little bit about naturalistic developmental behavioral interventions so we're going to talk about those first. لما نيجي نتكلم عن اللعب هنبدا نتكلم على التدريس في البيئه الطبيعيه بحيث ان يعني ده اللي هنبدا بيه. 
if you want to in the chat, feel free to comment whether or not you if you're familiar with uh, naturalistic developmental behavioral interventions. I'm always curious to know who's familiar with them. لو عندك أي أي تفاصيل أو أشياء عايزين تكتبونها في الشات عن التدريس في البيئة الطبيعية تقدر تكتبونها. So these are interventions that are empirically supported and based on behavioral learning and developmental research. Basically, everything I'm saying right now is exactly what's on the slide. So I don't know if you want to translate or just tell them to look at the slide. But yeah, I will just brief. Yeah, okay. <laughs> that is a big thing. Yeah, دي قائمة بالتدخلات ال ال المبنية على الأبحاث. Empirical يعني مبنية على أبحاث أو الأبحاث العلمية بتدعم فعاليات. فدي مجموعة من التدخلات القائمة على الأبحاث العلمية اللي مبنية على التدخلات السلوكية. Okay. So when people have been looking at how to improve the interventions that we provide, they've identified these four things as being the best way for children to learn. The first is to have active engagement. The second is to make sure that learning is developmentally appropriate and follows a developmental sequence. The third is that learning occurs in meaningful contexts. And the fourth is that learning is just beyond the child's current performance. تمام يبقى اذا عندنا المعايير اربع معايير اساسيه عشان نتاكد من ان التدخلات بتاعتنا هي تدخلات يعني مناسبه للطالب وايضا مدعومه بالادله. طبعا دي اللي هم الاربع نقاط الموجودين هنا اللي هي واحده منهم ان الطالب يكون مندمج معايا في النشاط. والاخرى ان يكون تركز على ان الطالب يكون عنده تلقائيه ويكون عنده مبادره في التواصل مع الاخرين. Yes. When looking at these four things, sometimes in the behavior analytic work we're doing, we don't have all four. <laughs> so we sometimes don't pay close enough attention to development and we also don't always teach in a meaningful way. So today we're going to talk a bit about how to make sure we're we're focusing on that developmental piece and it's meaningful to the child. أحياناً وإحنا بنشتغل ما بنقدرش مرات يعني يكون الأربع مؤشرات دول موجودين في البرامج بس إحنا النهاردة في المحاضرة بتاعتنا هنحاول نركز على النقطتين اللي هم الأولياتين اللي هي الخاصة بالديفلوبمنتال يعني يكون المهارات تكون مناسبة للطالب ونقطة تانية in the research that's been done on naturalistic developmental behavioral interventions shows that children make the most progress when you focus on child initiation and spontaneity so the play-based piece is really big here in creating those opportunities for initiation and spontaneous responding الابحاث العلميه بتثبت ان اكثر برامج فعاله هي البرامج اللي بتشتغل على مهارتين اساسيتين هي تشايلد انيشيشن يعني ان الطالب يكون عنده مبادره هو اللي يبادر في التواصل هو اللي يبادر في التعامل مع الاخرين والتلقائيه ان يكون عنده تلقائيه في الاستجابات بتاعته. And the intervention is provided using socially rich interactions and everyday routines. So most of the naturalistic developmental behavioral interventions are Provided in a play-based format. ومهم جدا إن هذه التدخلات تكون يعني قائمة بشكل أساسي على اللعب أو أو على الأنشطة الاجتماعية اللي تساعد الطالب على اكتساب هذه المهارة. Oh, real quick before I go to the next part, I forgot I don't have anyway. This down here at the bottom it says Shreedman at all 2015. If you want to learn more about the different naturalistic developmental behavioral interventions, there's 10 to 15 different interventions. This article summarizes them very well. So I highly recommend reading that article. المقالة اللي مكتوبة من تحت دي تقدر تجد فيها أكثر من 15 تدخل مبني على اللي هو التدريس في البيئة الطبيعية، فلو أنت حابب إن أنت تقرأ أكثر عنه. Okay. Another thing that is important to discuss before we look at how to use play-based intervention is understanding the difference between topography and function. نقطة مهمة عشان نفهم أكثر إزاي نقدم البرامج بتاعتنا عن طريق التدخلات القيمة على اللعب 
نحن نفهم الفارق ما بين الشكل شكل الشيء ووظيفته لو شكل الشكل بتاع الشيء نفسه او شكل المشكله السلوكيه او شكل المهاره ووظيفه المهاره just because we can teach a child to engage in a certain response does not mean we're teaching the skill in a meaningful way so i'm going to go through some examples on the next slide but i just want to make sure everybody understands that we can get people to perform anything <laughs> but it doesn't mean it's being done in a meaningful way اه يعني هي بتاكد بتقول هنا ان احنا مش معنى ان احنا درسنا الطالب مهاره معينه يبقى معنى ان هو بيعملها بشكل يعني ليه اهميه اجتماعيه يعني شكل ليه معنى ممكن ادرس الطالب مهاره لكن هو يقوم بها ولكن لا تمثل له معنى ولا ولا تضيف له اهميه ومهم جدا ان احنا نركز ان لما ندرس الطالب مهاره تكون هذه المهاره يعني تضيف معنى او الطالب يقوم بها ويكون لها معنى بالنسبه لي او لها اهميه مجتمعيه بالنسبه لي For example, if a child is given food each time a target response occurs, you and the food is reinforcing, you should see an increase in that target response occurring. زي مثلا احيانا لما بنعطي للطالب الطعام كمعزز لما تحصل استجابه معينه، مثلا سؤال يجاوب عليه بعطيه بعطيه قطعه حلوى وبعطيه الطعام المفضل لي. فطبيعي ان الاستجابه بتاعته هتزيد. This does not mean the child is performing the response for the right reasons. بس ده مش معناه ان الطالب بيقوم بالاستجابه او بيرد عليا لسبب للسبب الصحيح او للسبب الصحيح يعني. In fact, the opposite might be true. The child may move their body in the way you're teaching them to, but only because they want that food. They're just trying to obtain the food that you have and they're development of a meaningful response never occurs. وده ممكن يكون العكس هو الصحيح ان هو الطالب فقط بيستجيب بهذا الشكل او بيرد على سؤالك بهذا الشكل او بيحرك ايده او بيقلدك فقط للحصول على الطعام والاستجابه بالنسبه لي او رده فعله او رده على سؤالك هي غير ذات معنى لي هو فقط يقوم بها من اجل الحصول على الطعام او المعزز. So let's look at some examples. <laughs> The first one is eye contact. A lot of interventions will focus on eye contact. If we look at the topographical way of teaching eye contact, you might have someone sit in front of the child saying, look at me, and waiting for the child to look at them. يعني مثلا ناخد أمثلة زي مثلا ال eye contact تمام اللي هو زي التواصل البصري بالعين. لو احنا بصينا على شكل الاي كونتاكت انت ممكن تقول للطالب بص عليا او انظر الى عينيا الطالب هينظر الى عينيك ده الشكل بتاعه Another one might be the instructor doesn't say anything at all they just sit in front of the child and wait for the child to look at them before they provide ممكن... their instruction يا yeah, ممكن الطالب يعني ينظر للمعلم قبل ما يعطيه instruction ده كل ده شكل topography شكل للاستجابه so in these examples the child may start looking at the adult more frequently because the stimulus control is there of either look at me or the waiting before they present the instruction but that doesn't mean the child is learning meaningful eye contact that they're engaging in eye contact for the reasons a child would look at someone. بس هذا لا يعني ان الطالب بينظر لي لي على اساس انه يحافظ على تواصله معاك او ينظر الي كنوع من المبادره منه ان هو يتواصل معاك هو فقط ربما بينظر اليك لان انت اعطيته امر بالنظر اليك او ان انت او ان هو منتظر منك تعليمات معينه بالنظر ليك وده الفارق ما بين التوبوغرافي والفانكشن When we look at why children look to an adult, the reasons are listed in this last column here. So a child might look toward another person to continue an interaction. For example, if their parent is tickling them and the parent pauses for a second, maybe they're looking at their phone or something, the child may look to their parent to continue that interaction and have them get more tickles. 
اه لكن لكن لو احنا بصينا نشوف ال ال الوظيفه اللي ممكن تكون من التواصل البصري ممكن يكون الهدف منها ان هو الشخص بيريد انه يتواصل معاك يعني عايز يكمل تواصل معاك او ان هو عايز يبادر للتواصل معاك او ان هو بينظر اليك بحثا عن متعه معينه او بحثا عن شيء معين محبب بالنسبه لي ده اللي هو شيء المينينجفول اللي هو اللي, اللي يكون ليه معنى A child might also look to initiate an interaction. So especially if you've seen little ones, like nine months old, they'll look around the room and find someone to have an interaction with. The same is true for the children we work with. That initial development of eye contact should be communicative in nature. They're looking to have some type of interaction with someone. Like, for example, the small children are looking for the room so that someone is just looking for them. كنوع من ان هو يبادر للتواصل معاه او يلاعبه او يحصل منه على تواصل معين فده كل دي تعتبر معاني للتواصل and then lastly another example is to share enjoyment so if a child is playing with a toy that they really like and they're really enjoying that toy that's one aspect of enjoying something But shared enjoyment is when the child is enjoying that toy or activity with the adult and they're gazing up to the adult and back at the toy and having a really connected experience with the adult that they're playing with. وسبب اخر انه ممكن يكون الطالب زي مثلا الطفل لما يكون معاه لعبه وبيلعب بهذه اللعبه وينغمس في اللعب معها بيكون في تواصل بصري قاعد يبص على اللعبه ويشوفها كذلك نفس الشيء انه ممكن يكون التواصل البصري الغرض منه الحصول على مثلا شيء ممتع من الطرف او انه بيستمتع بنشاط معين مع الشخص اللي بيعمل معاه سواء كان والده او المعلم. There's two more examples listed on here pointing and imitation. I'm not going to go through those in detail just for the sake of time, but it's the same idea. We are training these developing stimulus control of certain words. So we get that physical response happening. But we need to make sure we're looking at why do little ones learn how to point and how and why do little ones learn how to imitate and make sure it's meaningful that we're not just focus, focusing on the response, the topography piece of it. بالضبط النقطة برضو المهمة إن إحنا فقط ما نركز على الشكل اللي فيها مثلا مثلا ما نركز إنه الطالب مجرد إنه يقلدني فقط لمجرد التقليد لا لازم يكون يقلد بشكل له وظيفه او شكل يكون التقليد ده له اهميه وله وظيفه بالنسبه له. All right, so now we're getting in, getting into the fun stuff. We're going to talk about some recommendations for developing play-based teaching. This is I tend to focus mostly on early intervention because that's where play-based makes more more sense. So this initial part is just some general ideas of things to be doing if you're providing early intervention. دي طبعا مجموعه من النصائح المهمه جدا لو احنا بنشتغل في يعني في التدخل المبكر ازاي نقدر ان احنا نستخدم بعض هذه النصائح في التدخل المبكر عن طريق اللعب يعني. Okay. So this is a list of different targets that I have uh, decided or observed as important when we're working in early intervention. These typically are not listed in any of the assessments currently used by behavior analysts or really in general. There's, you don't really see them in commercially available materials right now. دي مجموعة من الأهداف المهمة جدا اللي احنا بنستخدمها في تدخل مبكر وهذه الأهداف كمان لن تجدوا كثير منها في التقييمات الحالية اللي بتستخدم من قبل محللين السلوك وبتستخدم في تحليل السلوك التطبيقي فهذه الاهداف مهمه جدا ورغم ذلك هي ايضا غير موجوده في كثير من التقييمات. These specific targets though if you're working with autism you do see them in the assessments they do for diagnosing autism and in some of the naturalistic interventions the research that they're doing now these are the types of things they're measuring. الاهداف دي تجدوها في الاشياء التشخيصيه تحديدا من جين شخص توحد مثلا وكذلك هتجدوها حاليا بكثره في التدخلات القائمه 
أو التدخلات في البيئة الطبيعية تجد هذه الأهداف موجودة ومكررة في 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 القسمين دول أو في المجالين دول تحديدا. And these targets are skills that are being identified in research for autism as the critical features. So when children are not engaging in these skills, that's when they end up with an autism diagnosis. And these are the types of things that might interfere with learning overall, not having these skills. So we need to make sure we're assessing and targeting these skills. النقطة دي مهمة هي بتقول النقاط دي هي النقاط اللي احنا لما بنيجي نشخص التوحد بنجد عند الطفل في عنده قصور في هذه النقاط وكذلك هذه النقاط والاهداف المهمة جدا اللي انتم شايفينها دي هي اللي بتتعارض بعدين مع قدرة الطالب على التعلم في بيئات تعليمية مختلفة فلذلك هي ذات اهمية كبرى. I'm going to explain a few of them, but we won't have time to go through all of them. Yeah, um, yeah. So one of them I have a video for, but I just want to touch on a couple on the slide. Um, so well, actually, first I'll show the video just to make sure everyone's. So yes, first okay. we'll watch this video. So one of the targets um, that I see a lot of confusion around and that I needed some additional training on as well when I first started looking at this stuff is directed vocals. هنشوف الان فيديو ونشوف نشاهد الفيديو. So I want you to watch this video and this is a video that was just on YouTube. It's um, went viral. This is a dad and son and I want you to watch how they're engaging with each other and notice how this little boy, he's about one and a half, is looking to his dad and really directing his communication to his father. They need to work on that, right? Yeah. Yes, okay. Did you understand it though? Yeah. No. Okay. All right. <laughs> huh? Oh, no. Not, not this one. This is, this is the grand finale of this. Okay, the last one? Yeah, that's the last one. That's what I was wondering. I don't know what they're going to do next season because they did some stuff this time. Exactly what I was thinking. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Right, don't bring that in. You know what I'm saying? Don't do the same stuff. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, that's like that. Yeah. Yeah. Like, go somewhere else with that, but don't bring it here. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. That's what I said. And then it was like, ah. You know what I'm saying? And I was like, what in the world? But don't do it here. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Really? I thought the same thing. <laughs> we think a lot alike, huh? <laughs> That's crazy. Right. <laughs> okay. So. The child doesn't say any actual words, but they're having a back and forth interaction and they're really enjoying each other. You see the little one using lots of gestures and he clearly understands that his dad is a communication partner. طبعا الجميل في الفيديو ان زي ما انتم لاحظتوا ان الولد ما قالش ولا كلمه لكن الفكره ان تحس ان في كان في حوار قاعد يحصل ما بين الاب والابن وفي عن اشارات وايماءات فده ده جزء مهم جدا اللي هو في تواصل رايح جاي في شيء متبادل ما بين بين طرفين بين طرف واخر فدي مهاره مهمه جدا احنا بنحتاج ان احنا نشتغل بيها مع الاطفال اللي احنا بنشتغل معاهم اللي هو الاخذ والعطاء يعني الولد ياخذ ويعطي معاك حتى ولو بي عن طريق الفوكلز اللي هي ربما قد يكون ليس لها معنى لكن دي اساس مهم تنبني عليه اللغه والتواصل ده حقيقه For a lot of the little ones that we work with, if they do make vocalizations, it's not directed like this. You don't see those gaze shifts. You don't see those gestures. You don't see the changes in facial expressions. الأطفال اللي احنا بنشتغل معهم كثيرا لا نجد هذه ال هي الأخذ والعطاء أو إن في 
تواصل مشترك ما بين ال... ده تجد الفوكاليزيشن بيحصل ولكنه بشكل فردي لكن هنا اللي احنا شايفين في الفيديو ان في اخذ وعطاء يعني في في التواصل متبادل ما بين الطرفين This particular skill is one that is critical for developing more advanced communication. So when we're working with our children, especially in play-based settings, we need to be setting up opportunities to see these types of things happening, not just the vocals, the gestures, the facial expressions, all of it, really understanding that communication partner. زي ما قلنا اللي هي ان الطالب ياخذ ويكون في تواصل ما بينه وبين طرف اخر ان ما يكون يكون هذا التواصل بشكل مستمر او يحدث تمام فدي مهاره اساسيه بينبني عليها كثير جدا من المهارات الاخرى اللي بتساعد الطالب بعدين على اكتساب المهارات التواصل اللي تفيده في حياته So these, I'm going to go over a little bit of the list that I showed you and just some things that I ask and assess for so I can figure out if I need to be targeting these skills within my sessions. طيب خلي بالكم معايا في النقاط دي لان دي اهداف مهمه جدا وانا بشتغل مع الطفل. هذه الاسئله لازم اسالها بنفسي او اسالها لنفسي وانا بشتغل مع الطفل طبعا اذا كنا بنشتغل مع اطفال توحد ايه هي النقاط المهمه اللي احنا نشتغل عليها. So for gaze shifting, I want to know, is the child shifting their gaze from an item or to an item to express interest? So if they see something that they want, will they look at that to let you know, hey, I like that thing? Or do they really not even seem to notice that it's there? Exactly. If a child, for example, has a certain thing for me, he wants to know what he wants. يصل لي هل الطالب بيستطيع ان هو ينظر الى هذا الشيء وبعدين يتابع نظره ليك انت على اساس انه يعبر ليك عن ان هو اهتمامه بان يحصل على الشيء المفضل ليه ده او الشيء المحبب ليه سواء كانت لعبه او اي شيء and then i also want to know if they'll shift their gaze to the item to a person and back to that item to share an interaction so it's not just about hey i like this but they want to communicate to someone using their their eye gaze that they like the item. زي ما قلت هل الطالب بيستطيع ان ينقل نظره من الشيء المحبب ليه ليك انت كنوع من ان هو عايز يوصل لك فكره ان انا عايز هذا الشيء فدي برضه شيء احنا نحتاج مهاره نحتاج ان نقيمها عشان نقدر نعرف هل الطالب بيقدر يعمل شيفت او يبادل ما بين انتباهه للشيء لانتباهه ليك انت. And when we're doing this, uh, the gaze shifting, they don't need to be looking directly at the person's eyes. I never work on that, but they need to just be at least shifting toward another person to show they understand the, the communication partner. بالنسبة لنا مش مهم إن هو لازم ينظر إليه في عيني. ده مش هدف أساسي ممكن نشتغل عليه. لكن الهدف إن الطالب بيبادل النظر للشيء المحبب لي وللطرف آخر. مش لازم يكون في العينين يعني. لازم يكون مباشرة بالعين، فإن هو يبادل النظر ما بين الشيء المحبب لي أو الشيء اللي عايزه أو اللعبة اللي عايزها وبينك أنت كفرد أو بين شخص آخر. The other tar another target that I look at is shared enjoyment. And for this one, I'm looking at whether or not the child shares an experience with someone or is too focused on the actual item in the environment that they don't even really notice that there's someone to share an experience with. النقطة الثانية هل الولد يستطيع إنه يعبر أو يشارك حبه أو اهتمامه أو تفضيله لشيء معين هل بيستطيع أن يوصل لي إنه مهتم بهذا الشيء عن طريق الابتسامة أو عن طريق إنه يركز في هذا الشيء وتب ويبان عليه إنه هو هذا الشيء بالنسبة لي ممتع وذا أهمية بالنسبة لي. And then just a few more. <laughs> so yeah. sharing smiles um, is kind of similar to the, the gaze shifting, but it's looking at whether or not the child responds with a smile when someone smiles at them. And this is a skill that develops really young, like three month old babies can do this. But for a lot of our children that we work with, if they don't understand communication partners, 
they're not responding to smiles in the way that you would typically see. من الأهداف الأخرى مثلا شيرد سمايل هالولد عندما تبتسم له يبتسم لي دي برضو نقطة مهمة جدا ممكن نجدها في الأطفال الصغار اللي عندهم ثلاث شهور وأكبر لكن أحيانا قد لا نجدها مع الأطفال طبعا المشخصين بالتوحد اللي احنا بنشتغل معهم فدي برضو قد يكون من التارجتس اللي احنا نشتغل عليه Maintaining engagement is another really important area to look at. So with this one, I'm looking at, will the child engage with someone for a period of time and, and for how long? And also, if you're interacting and you pause, does the child initiate continuing that interaction? نقطة تانية لأي درجة الولد بيستطيع إن هو يندمج في نشاط معين لفترة ما. يعني هل الولد قادر انه يندمج معاك انت في نشاط لمده معينه؟ تمام مش كده بس هل الطالب قادر ان هو يبادر يبادر معاك على اساس انه يكمل هذه النشاط المحبب او النشاط اللي هو مندمج فيه؟ هل هو بيبادر لان يكمل هذا النشاط ولا لا؟ Then we also need to look at this combination of skills. So eye gaze, reach, and smile are each their own separate skill set, but being able to put all three of those together for an interaction is very difficult for a lot of children. كذلك مثلا ال eye gaze اللي حركة العين, reach إنه يصل الشيء, smile إنه يبتسم هذه المهارات البسيطة على الرغم من إن هي يا كلها مع بعضها لكن هي مهمة جدا على أساس إنها بتساعد الطالب إنه يتواصل معك. ب ب ب يعني بأفضل شكل ممكن. So for this one, I ask a question about each of those: whether or not they shift their gaze, whether they reach to indicate wanting something, and whether they smile during an interaction. So can they do each skill by itself? And then I look at: can they do any of these skills together? آه وهنا زي ما إحنا شايفين كل كل هدف مكتوب عليه السؤال بتاعه يعني هل يستطيع الطالب أن ينق ين ينقل نظره؟ من الشيء الأوبجكت اللي عايز يحصل عليه ليك أنت كشخص عشان يشاركك اهتمامه بهذا الشيء أو كأنه يطلب منك أن يطلب منك أنه يريد أن يندمج مع هذا الشيء هل يستطيع ذلك؟ هل الولد يستطيع أنه يعبر ليك عن أنه احتياجه أن يصل إلى شيء معين أو أن يده تمسك الشيء ده أو يأخذ هذا الشيء؟ And then two more uh, pointing to an interesting object so with this one does the child point in an attempt to communicate with you? So it's not because you've told them to point, but they just initiate pointing to something and they're trying to interact with you during that communication. I am not a tenure in the world you share. Hal it told me a certain you share in a she come how I know that I was on my and how you start and you share in a hal wash and you will like an eyes or I want to read that is she. And then the last one is giving. So does the child give an item to others to continue an interaction or to communicate? Again, this isn't based on me telling the child to give me something. They just come up to me and give me what a toy they're playing with because they want to have an interaction with me. There was a question in the chat about what gaze means. So I just want to touch on that to make sure we're all on the same page. So gaze is where you're looking with your eyes. So if I have, you know, this phone, I have a bad screen. So I'm looking, my gaze is on the eye, is on the phone. Um, if I shift my gaze to someone as they walk in the room, that's me shifting my eyes from looking at the phone. To looking at someone that just came in the room, so it's wherever your eyes are looking is gaze. I don't know if you want to translate that or not, yeah. but <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I think, think. okay. All right. So the last three uh, that I wanted to touch on, just in more detail, um, these are uh, still part of that list that you saw in that the big slide with the list of skills. So the next one is gaze to face. So I kind of just talked about that one, but does the child look from an item and shift their where they're looking to look at someone else in the environment? 
يعني هل الطالب يستطيع ان هو ينقل نظره من الشيء اللي هو يريده او الشيء اللي هو بينظر الى ليك انت كشخص عشان يحاول انه يشاركك التواصل معاه او يحاول انه يلفت انتباهك ان هذا الشيء محبب لي او مفضل لي and then goal directed reaching is looking at whether or not the child reaches for something to express an interest or a request so they reach because they like a toy and they want to have it or maybe they're reaching to point out like not they're not physically pointing but they're reaching if something's up high on a shelf and they're wanting to request that item النقطة الثانية هل الولد يستطيع انه يصل الى الاشياء يعني يستطيع انه مثلا يمد ايده عشان ياخذ هذا الشيء او عشان يعبر عن طلبه او ان هو يريد ان ياخذ هذا الشيء and then the last one is to make eye contact when there is a problem so this is one that develops pretty early as well but we don't tend to see it a whole lot with our children when there's something that's not working does the child look to you for help to say hey this isn't working what's happening here النقطه الثانيه والمهمه هي هل الطفل يستطيع ان هو ينظر لي عشان يقول لك ان هو في مشكله زي مثلا لو هو في شيء عايز يشغله او في مشكله معينه فيتواصل معك بصريا عشان يقول لك ان هو يعني في في شيء يحتاج الى مساعده هل الطالب يستطيع ان هو لما يقف في موقف معين وما يعرفش يتصرف ينظر اليك كنوع ان هو يطلب منك مساعدته عشان يحل له المشكله اللي هو فيها الان So when we look at all of these different targets, you can see hopefully that these are not really well suited for sitting at a table doing discrete trial teaching. These to get to that meaningful functional reason for engaging in these, they're all spontaneous. They're all things a child should be initiating on their own. So when we want to work on these skills, we need to be doing it in a way that's more naturalistic that promotes the skill occurring on its own these are not things we can really prompt or make happen طبعا زي ما انتم شايفين المهارات دي كلها في صعب جدا ان انت تعلمها للطالب على الطاوله في مثلا ديسكريت ترايل تيتشنج صعب جدا انت تدرس المهارات المختلفه دي في 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 ان انت قاعد انت هو على طاوله كرسيين وطاوله لكن لا هي يمكن ان انت تدرس هذه المهارات عن طريق التدريس في البيئه الطبيعيه، انت تدرسه بشكل طبيعي اثناء اللعب، اثناء التواصل معاه، في انشطه طبيعيه بتحدث في البيت، خاصه اثناء اللعب. All right, so there was a, a question about sharing the slides. I will do that. I don't have them. Oh, wait, here we go. Yes, I'm putting them in the chat for the okay. English version, version of the slides. Thank you. <laughs> okay. This is a fun activity. Um, oops, I just put them to one person though, hold on. This is a fun activity that you can do with a friend if you're wanting to try to practice identifying these skills or just practice understanding what they are. Yeah, دي طبعا بعض الانشطة اللي احنا ممكن نعملها تمام ونشوف ازاي نقدر نستخدمها مع ممكن انت تعملها مع اي حد موجود معاك مع زميل مع وتشوف ازاي ممكن تستخدم الانشطه دي اصلا بشكل طبيعي لتدريس الطلاب. So what you can do is get a balloon and blow it up with a partner and create a suspenseful routine. So you might blow it up and say ready, set, go and then you let the balloon go and it flies around the room. So that's the first part of it. يا yeah, ده الجزء لو انت ممكن تجيب بالونه وتنفخها وتبدا تعد مع الطالب او مع شخص ريدي سيت جو وبعدين تسيب البالونه ايه يعني تفرغ الهواء اللي اللي, اللي هو جواها. So you do that a few times and you go a little bit slower. Ready, set, go. And you make the routine more and more suspenseful. And you're just observing the partner and seeing what types of these skills are they engaging in. Are they looking at you? Are they reaching for the balloon? Do they go and get the balloon and bring it over to you? طبعا وانت وانت بتلعب اللعبه البسيطه دي ممكن اصلا تعملها بشكل اكثر بطء يعني مثلا تعد واحد جاهز وتنفق البالونه شويه شويه خليها تطلع لها وتشوف الطالب هيعمل ايه هل هيتابع انت وانت بتنفق البالونه هل 
هل لما البالونة تفرغ الهواء اللي فيها وتاعها هل هيروح يجيب البالونة ويديها لك مرة تانية وهكذا إذا ده نشاط واحد تقدر تعمل بيه أفكار كتيرة جدا And you can do the same thing with a second part where you go to blow up the balloon and you pretend you can't blow it up like it's you're blowing and nothing's happening so you drop the balloon down by your side and you're like oh i can't get it and you're just frustrated about it يعني برضه نفس الشيء ممكن تعمل زي تمثيليه او ان انت مش قادر تنفخ البالونه وتحاول تنفخها تنفخها وبعدين انت مش قادر وبعدين البالونه تقع منك وتمس قدام الطالب ان انت مش قادر ان انت تنفخ البالونه وتشوف هل الطالب متفاعل معاك هل هو بيلاحظ حركات بتاعتك الانشطه اللي انت بتعملها When you drop the balloon down by your side, you get a good idea of whether or not the partner is paying attention to you or just focused on the balloon. Because if they just look at the balloon, that means they're not really sharing this fun activity with you. They're object focused. They're not having a social interaction with you. فانت هتشوف بقى الطالب اللي انت بتشتغل معاه هل هو ركز على البالونه نفسها ولا هو ركز عليك انت وانت بتحاول تبدي ان انت مش قادر تنفخ البالونه فده هيظهر اذا كان هو مستمتع بالنشاط معاك وفي تواصل بينك وبينه وهو متابع الحركات بتاعتك واللمات بتاعتك ولا هو كان منشغل بالبالونه نفسها So when you're doing this you're just observing you don't prompt anything you're just engaging this activity and observing what skills you see demonstrated by your partner or if you're trying it with one of your clients you can see from that list i gave you are they engaging in any of these responses طبعا انت وانت بتعمل النشاط ده مش مطلوب منك انت تعمل اي تلقين للطالب عشان يبدي استجابه معينه اطلاقا انت كل اللي المفروض تعمله ان انت تحاول تقيم مدى تفاعل الطالب معاك زي ما قلنا القائمه اللي احنا تحدثنا عنها وشرحناها خطوه خطوه وتشوف ايه المهارات اللي موجوده عند الطالب ايه المهارات اللي هو تقدر تبدا بيها واللي انت تقدر ان انت تبني منها بعض من المهارات المهمه للطالب and then if you're someone who's pretending to be the child if you're the partner you can have a lot of fun with this <laughs> you can pretend to do whatever you want you can engage in some of the skills from the target list you can just sort of sit there and do nothing but the goal is to practice being able to observe whether or not these skills are happening المهم انت حتى لو بتعمل النشاط ده مع زميل ليك وطبعا وات ايفر كانت الاستجابه بتاعته او رده فعله فكره ان انت بتتدرب ازاي تلاحظ الطرف الاخر او الطالب انت بتشتغل معاه وتسجل الملاحظات بتاعتك وتشوف ايه المهارات اللي موجوده وايه المهارات اللي غير موجوده على اساس ان انت تستهدفها لاحقا في الانشطه اللي هتعملها لاحقا. So hopefully some of you will try that and I'd love to hear how it goes. But this is a really good one to do with your children too, the clients, just to see how they respond. This particular activity um, is from there's an assessment called the ADOS. So if any of you are familiar with that, you've probably seen it in yeah. there. Yes, yes, I know it. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So now let's dive into some strategies you can use when you're trying to uh, provide play-based intervention. دي مجموعة من دي مجموعة من الاستراتيجيات المقترحة طبعا الجزء ده مهم جدا نركز عليه هي مجموعة من الاستراتيجيات المقترحة اللي انت تستخدمها وانت بتلعب مع الطالب احنا قلنا بنتكلم على الانشطة اللي بتدرس في البيئة الطبيعية دي بعض الاقتراحات لانشطة تقدر تعملها وانت بتلعب مع الطالب. So these are all from research on autism and or my clinical experience with working with little ones. So the first one is to engage in exaggerated facial expression. So while you're playing with your clients, really having big facial expressions for happy, you can be dramatic about stuff. Oh my goodness. And just really putting on a show. You're kind of a, like a clown. تمام النقطة الأولى إن أنت حاول ديما تستخدم التعبير الوجه والإيماءات الوجه يعني ما يكونش ديما يعني وجهك ثابت على طول أو انفعالاتك واحدة حاول إن أنت ديما تكون يعني مثلا إذا هبي تبقى سعيد وتبين للطالب إن أنت فعلا سعيد إذا مثلا الموقف يستجيب إن أنت تكون مثلا حزين لازم تظهر هذه الأشياء على وجهك وأنت شغال مع الطالب. 
And then you can also use repetitive vocalization. So saying the same word or sound within an activity. So if you're pushing a car, you might say vroom, vroom every time you push the car. And the team of people that's with the child should all do the, build in the same types of vocalizations and routines with that child. Uh, اللي بيقوله الطالب يعني مثلا لو انت بتلعب معاه بالعربيه لازم تعمل له صوت العربيه يعني مثلا العربيه تعمل له صوت العربيه نفسها قطار تعمل له صوت القطار على اساس ان الولد يربط ما بين صوت الشيء وبين الشيء نفسه فيبقى النشاط اكثر في فاعليه when we do play based instruction even though some people when they look at play based instruction it seems like it might be really loose one way to make it a little bit more structured is to have routines and the research shows that young children especially learn better with routines كذلك احنا عارفين ان معظم الطلاب اللي بنشتغل معاهم الطلاب اللي يكون عندهم توحد بيكون يحبوا الروتين فانت برضو استخدم الروتين يعني استخدم الروتين نفسه وانت بتلعب مع الطالب على اساس ان انت تستخدم شيء هو اصلا بيحبه الطالب so you can use routines to help teach things such as playing social games and then pausing for an interaction. So you might um, do some tickles and have a tickle monster who comes out and then you pause and you wait to see if the child will do something, but you do it the same way each time. So it's more predictable and it's more likely that you'll get an interaction, initiated interaction from the child. Yeah, this one I, I will just elaborate it more. Okay. <laughs> actions, yes. So, yeah, Masa, as a set of Telab Ma Talib Masalan, Betrayed the Mao, Tamil or Sot Mayan. How little Tamil have Shakli routine? Yeah, Masalan Betrayed the Mao, Utan Tazer Shway. But in Terja, Masalan, the Unta Masan, never not must it Zagzer, yeah, Shantodah, yeah. Tickle him. You tickle him to Zagzer Shwaya, Utah, but then Tan Tazer Shway, as I said, no Yanzur elects any. But if you tiff him, if him and who. عايز اكتر فتلعب اللعبه نفسها مره ثانيه وتنتظر يبقى اذا استخدام الروتين في اللعب هيخلي الطالب اكثر اندماجا مع You can also build a routine by labeling something a few times as you hand it over and then pause to see if the child engages in an interaction so you might say you know book 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 as you hand the book to the child you do that a few times and then at some point you pause and you say book 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 and you wait to see do they look at you do they reach for it are they engaging in any sort of communication with you as you sort of slow that routine down كذلك لو انت بتلعب مع الطالب ممكن تستخدم تسميه الاشياء بشكل روتين زي مثلا لو انت معاك عربيه فتقول له عربيه او سياره 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 بعدين ثاني مره سياره وتنتظر شويه تنتظر شوية لغاية ما الولد يتواصل معك وعندهم سيارة وبهذا الشكل بحيث ان انت تحاول ان انت تخلي الطالب ينتبه اليك اكثر عن طريق ان انت تنمط او تخلي التسمية الاشياء لها نمط معين او لها روتين معين فالطالب يتوقعها منك ويتواصل معك لما انت تغير هذا الروتين قليلا okay, couple more suggestions one is yes. to make sure you're using gestures so these also should be exaggerated. And this is a way to help create opportunities that include a type of prompting, but you're not directly physically prompting the child. So you might look dramatically at the item that needs to be chosen, or you might use your hands to express an emotion. You might dramatically look at some place in the room. So you're making it more likely that they'll do whatever response you're looking for, but it's not a direct prompt of do it like this. Yeah, طبعا الجزء الاخر هو استخدام الايماءات، انت عارفين الايماءات او الاشاره هي تعتبر من اقل التل... انواع التلقين اللي احنا بنستخدمها، فانت هنا بتستخدم اقل درجه من التلقين وبتضمن ان الطالب بيتفاعل معاك، وبالتالي يبقى انت بتعطيه فرصه انه يتفاعل او يبدي الاستجابه الصحيحه باقل مستوى من التلقين. And then the last one is to have mutually led shared control so when people think about play-based learning uh the child is leading but it can't just be the child leading so you have this balance of interaction and control throughout the session where the child is initiating some 
and the adult is initiating some. I'm going to go into more detail on this on a couple more slides. بعدين الجزء الاخر ان ان يكون في تشارك متبادل او يعني ما بينك وبين الطالب في النشاط اللي بتشتغلوه يعني الطالب يبدا بالنشاط يشتغل شويه بعدين انت تشتغل شويه باذا ايه هنا في مبادره مشتركه ما بينك وبين There's a couple of questions in the chat so I'm going to answer those real quick before I go to the next part the first one is how to help the child learn the imagination skill. So for what I'm focusing on today, it's more basic, really focusing on the social communication and building up those skills. If we have time, I'll try to dive in on pretend and imagination at the end, but I um, mostly focusing on the earlier skills right now for play. And then the other question is, um, does this fit like the things that I'm talking about right now? Are these suggestions for autistic only or with all delayed language cases? These are all based off of research on language delays. There are specific references for autism as well, but if you have a child with a language delay that doesn't have an autism diagnosis, these strategies are all beneficial and research-based for them as well. It's strategies that promote social communication and language development in play. All right, I'm gonna go ahead and do the next couple of sections and then I'll see what other questions we might have. So okay. the other piece that's important when we're looking at play-based intervention is having an understanding of active engagement. If we don't pay attention to how actively engaged our clients are, it's really difficult to teach them, but it's especially difficult for the play-based learning to be effective if they aren't actively engaged. من المهم جدا ان الطالب يكون نشط معايا في 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 النشاط اللي انا بعمله. So active engagement is a topic that's been studied by Dr. Weatherby at Florida State University. And this is a quote from one of her articles studying the importance of active engagement. So the quote says, utilizing parents to implement teaching strategies and supports to promote active engagement as early as possible may have the greatest potential to change children's developmental trajectories. And this should be translated on the slides. I don't know if you want to repeat it or. <laughs> yeah, yeah, okay, okay. Uh, طبعاً ده الجزء ده. بيتحدث على ان الـ 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 الاباء نفسهم مهم جدا ان هم يركزوا على الاكتيف انجيجمنت ان الطالب يكون مندمج معايا في اللعب او في النشاط اللي انا بشتغل معاه لان ده بيغير من قدرات الطالب مع الوقت. So how do we foster active engagement? It's um, kind of similar to some of the things we've already talked about, but first, the, one of the first things we need to do is use routines. When we have that predictability, it's more likely that children are going to actively participate in what we're doing, whether it's play or other parts of their day, like getting dressed. ازاي ان احنا ممكن نقوي او ندعم الاكتف انجيجمنت ازاي ان الطالب يبقى مندمج معايا في النشاط. اول شيء هو استخدام الروتين. Yes. Okay. When we are um, engaging with our clients, we also want to make sure we're helping them notice what's going on and participate with us. مهم جدا ان يكون الطالب عارف ايه هو النشاط اللي بيشتغل اللي بيشتغل فيه وايضا يشارك معايا هذا النشاط. To do that though, first we need to attend to what the child is attending to and support from there. So looking at if we're engaging in a routine, like getting dressed, or if we're trying to play with something, what does the child attend to within that routine? What are they motivated by? Notice that, talk about that first and join the child. Once that's going well, we can start working on helping them notice other parts of the routine or other aspects of the environment. لو انا بشتغل مع طالب مثلا في روتين معين زي مثلا انه بيلبس حاول اشوف ايه الجزء اللي في الروتين ده اللي الطالب بيستمتع بيه او بيحبه واحاول ان انا اشاركه هذه اللحظات يعني مثلا اذا بيلبس معين او مثلا بيغسل ايديه او مثلا بيحب يلعب 
بيدي تحت في الميه مثلا على سبيل المثال تحت المياه لازم ان انا اشوف هو ايه الشيء اللي بيحبه وبيستمتع بيه وانا ايضا اشارك هذا الايه الاستمتاع بهذا الشيء and then we also need to make sure we're focusing on what the child is trying to communicate this means we need to drop all of the lists of things that we're teaching and trying to get the child to communicate and really closely observe the specific child in front of you and what their current way is of communicating. They have something that they're doing. It just might not fit the list of skills that you're looking at teaching. كذلك مهم جدا نحاول ان انا اعرف هو الولد عايز يقول لي يعني اذا في مثلا شيء معين هل ترى الطالب ايه الرساله اللي هو عايز يوصلها له واكيد في شيء عايز يوصله لي ممكن يكون هو مش قادر يقول لي هذا الشيء بالكلام لكن اقدر ان انا افهم هو ايه الشيء اللي هو عايز يقوله لي من خلال ان انا ادرس الموقف نفسه ومن هي من هنا اقدر ان انا اندمج مع اكثر وافهم اكثر so with this for example you might have children who use scripting delayed echoics you might have children who use their bodies to communicate they're usually physically maneuvering their way throughout the environment they might move other people and use them as tools even though they're not vocally communicating or signing that's still communication and we need to acknowledge and understand that to help them stay actively engaged حتى لو كان الطالب مثلا على سبيل المثال عنده السكريبتنج السكريبتنج اللي معناها ان الطالب بيردد مقطوعات سمعها في اليوتيوب في التلفزيون او عنده الكولوليا المتاخره او ان هو بيحاول انه يعمل ايماءات بجسده او بجسمه أو بيدي أحاول قدر الإمكان إن أنا أحاول أفهم إيه الرسالة اللي هو عايز يوصلها لي على أساس إن أنا أفضل معاه في نفس النشاط وأفضل أيضا يعني مشارك معاه للنشاط اللي هو يقوم بيه عشان يبقى أكتر منغمس معاه في النشاط مش عايز إن هو يشعر بملل ويشعر بضيق وبضجر وهكذا. And then the last tip is to help them stay engaged during transitions. So for example, if you had a child where you're changing their diaper, You might ask, you know, do you want um, to carry the diapers or the wipes? You might see where they want to lay down on this table or the floor. So you're having them communicate their preferences as you engage in the transition. لذلك لو أنا بنتقل من نشاط إلى آخر، مثلاً على سبيل المثال واخد الولد أدخل الحمام أغير له الحفاظة، لازم إن أنا أقول له تحب تمسك الوايبس ولا تمسك الحفاظة؟ تحاول إن أنت ديما تستغل كل فرصة ممكن أنت تتواصل مع الطالب، تعطيه خيارات، تحاول إن أنت تنغمس معاه أو تندمج معاه في النشاط اللي أنت بتعمله، ده بيسهل عملية الانتقال من نشاط إلى آخر. This link down here, you can click on and they go into more detail about these as well if okay. you want to learn more. Yeah. All right, so next we're going to talk about a shared agenda. This ties in with that shared control piece that I was talking about earlier. When we want to create play-based intervention, we need to have a way to help follow the child's lead, but also make it so that we can incorporate the stuff that we need to teach. So we have some adult initiations as well. طبعا النقطة دي أيضا مهمة لأنها بتعرف عايزين نتعلم منها بعض النقاط الهامة إزاي إن إحنا نخلي الطالب هو اللي يختار الأنشطة وهو اللي يبقى يعني بي بي بيختار الأنشطة اللي ينغمس فيها ولكن في الوقت نفسه إحنا أيضا بنحاول إن إحنا ندربه أو ندرسه بشكل إيه نركز على المهارات اللي احنا عايزين نشتغل عليها معاه من خلال الانشطه المحببه بالنسبه لنا. So this is a quote from Janet Lansbury. She um, promotes a parenting method here called RAI. And I just really love the work that she does on helping people understand children. So the quote says, we perceive and acknowledge them to be unique, separate people. We enhance our awareness by observing them, allowing them the bit of space they need to show us who they are and what they need. طبعا دي مقولة رائعة لإحدى المتخصصين في 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 يعني عمل برامج خاصة بالتوحد والتوعية الأهالي والأمهات، يقول إن إحنا لازم نعرف إحنا نعرف إن هؤلاء الأطفال هم مختلفين شوية ويعني مختلفين عنا لكن إحنا محتاجين ان احنا نقوي فهمنا ووعينا من خلال ان احنا نلاحظهم نعطيهم مساحه ودور اكبر ان هم يورونا ايه الاشياء مين هم وايه الاشياء اللي بيحبوها وايه الاشياء اللي بيستمتعوا بيها. 
often we are so distracted by the list of skills that we're told we need to teach children. We don't take the time to really observe them, see who they are and what they need. So this quote summarizes that and the importance of doing that for pretty much every human, <laughs> not just our clients, but really closely trying to understand the child in front of you will make it a lot easier to create a shared agenda. لذلك مهم جدا انت تلاحظ الطالب تلاحظ اهتماماته تلاحظ الاشياء المحببه ليه عشان من خلال ملاحظتك للاشياء المحببه ليه والاشياء اللي هو بيحبها هتقدر تعمل معاه شغل كويس هتقدر تبني معاه شراكه تعليميه كويسه تقدر ان انت تشارك بعض اهتماماته وايضا تعلمه المهارات اللي هو محتاج ان يتعلمها So with a shared agenda we have two at least two people and they're participating in an activity together with a common goal and they're sharing attention around that activity. اه يعني هنا النقطه هنا المهمه ان احنا مثلا لو هنعمل نشاط نشاط ده يكون مع شخص اخر يكون احنا بنشتغل لهدف معين هدف معين ويكون في انتباه مشترك ما بينه وبين الطالب نفسه في النشاط ده. So we're going to watch this video. In this video, I want you to think about what the adult's agenda is to start with, what the child's agenda is to start with, and what they end up doing to create a shared agenda. So, and we see the video there, and we see how the adults are happy to see the agenda or the thing they love to the child. How he started, you notice the thing, and how he ends the activity that he started with the adults. This video is from the Mind Institute. It's an example of the Early Start Denver model, and the link is down here if you want to watch the whole video. We're not watching the whole thing right now. Okay. What are you doing? You found a way to get up here. stop it there just for time yes, so yeah. <laughs> the adult's agenda was to do the blocks and the child mm. was kind of doing their own thing trying to figure out what they wanted to play with yes, and a lot yeah. of interventions you mm. would see the adult bring the child over and try to follow through on the blocks because the adult said do you want to do blocks right but with play-based yeah. intervention and with focus on looking at these types of skills you don't do that <laughs> Okay, so just let me explain this point also okay. because it's really important. زي ما تشايفين الفيديو بيورينا ال الخصية كانت هتشتغل في شيء معين. تمام الطالب اختار شيء آخر. فالخصية عملت إيه؟ راحت شاركة نفس النشاط. يعني هي غمست معه في نفس النشاط اللي هو بيعمله. اللي هو كان بيلعب بالطبلة مش كده بس. ده هي كمان قدرت من خلال إن غماس معه في اللعبة. إن هي تلعب بشكل أفضل معاه وتسرع الضربة شوية وتعملها شوية فده هو بقى اللي هو إيه اللي معنى الشيرد أجندة أنت تحاول تشوف الأجندة بتاع الطالب إيه 
النشاط اللي هو حابه ايه حاول انت تدخل معاه في هذا النشاط وحاول انت تشاركه هذا الاهتمام وبعدين تقدر من خلال مشاركته لهذا الاهتمام تتعلمه بنفس الطريقه اللي احنا شفنا الاخصائيه طبعا الدكتوره حاطه اللينك بتاع الفيديو على اساس لو في حد حابب ان هو ايه يشوف الفيديو بشكل اكبر وطبعا يستفيد منه So then finally they share the agenda over these drums. You can see they're both focusing their attention on the drums. They're having a shared interaction and the common goal to play with the drums. Yes. طبعا زي ما انتم شفتوا الفيديو طبعا زي ان هي شاركت في 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 النشاط بتاعه. Okay. <laughs> I also love this video if you go back and watch it on your own. Pretty much all of the things we talked about so far you can practice looking for those in this video. So they're building a routine. The adult's going to start putting in some of her own ideas. You can see the list of target skills that I had. Um, you can look for those and use this to help train people to start identifying these types of things when they're providing intervention. طبعا لما تشوف الفيديو هتجد كل الملاحظات اللي احنا تكلمنا مع عليها يعني في في الفيديو. All right, so the last part for today, finally, I I have to build foundation. You, I always put down things that are important to know before we get to the the main topic. <laughs> so the last part is looking at how do we become a play partner and really engage in play based intervention. The جزء الأخير in uh, okay, says Hanan, I will just uh, yeah. There is one question, but I will just ask it after we finish this slide. Okay. okay. Yeah. Okay. فالآن الوقت إزاي بقى تعمل شراكة يعني تستخدم اللعب عشان تبقى شريك للطالب في اللعب نفسه. So these suggestions are primarily drawn from the Early Start Denver model. They do a really wonderful job of describing how to create. play-based naturalistic intervention for children. طبعا النصائح دي ماخوذة من نموذج دنفر للتدخل المبكر اللي هو اصلا ماخوذ ايضا من تحليل السلوك التطبيقي طبعا الاهداف جدا رائعه ومناسبه جدا لل... للطالب لل... يعني ك... كبدايه زي ان احنا نبني مع الطالب برنامج تدخل مبكر ويكون فيها كثير من الاهداف مبنيه على اللعب. So the first thing we need to do in order to become a play partner is really understand the motivation of the child that we're working with. And these are some strategies for doing that. أهم شيء يكون عنده الطالب دافعية للعب. يعني أنت لازم تبحث عن طريقة أن الولد يكون عنده دافعية. هو فعلا عايز يلعب. أو الشيء بالنسبة لي النشاط محبب بالنسبة لي. فدي طبعا مجموعة من النقاط اللي تساعدنا أن إحنا إزاي نخلق عند الطالب دافعية داخلية عشان نقدر نحن نعزز ونقدر نشتغل على إن نحن نخليه يلعب. So first, the child's interest needs to begin the activity. So when you're doing play-based intervention, there's a lot of space given, like you saw in the video, for the child to show an interest in something. And to know whether or not they're interested, you could look for things like this. Do they have positive affect? Are they leaning or moving toward something? Are they trying to take something? And of course, you can also see if they're trying to get away, because if they're trying to get away, they probably aren't interested in it. Yeah. It's important to see the positive effect of the child. If he has a certain interest, if he has a certain interest, he wants to take it. He wants to take it 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 to فانت لازم تشوف اهتمام الطالب رايح فين طبعا بالتاكيد اذا هو بيحاول يهرب من النشاط يبقى ده اكيد الشيء ده بالنسبه لي مش محبب يبقى لازم اول شيء تعرف على الانشطه او تتابع الانشطه اللي, اللي يهتم بها الطالب او اللي هي بتحوز على اهتمام من الطالب more specifically when talking about autistic children there is sometimes a difference in motivation You'll sometimes hear people say autistic children aren't motivated, but that's not true. We just need to put in effort to understand the child. في ناس كتير بتقول لك أحيانا أطفال التوحد ما بيكونش عندهم دفعية أكتر للعب لكن هي بتقول لك لا ده غير حقيقة إحنا بس محتاجين نعرف إيه الاهتمام بتاعتهم أو الأشياء المحببة بالنسبة ليهم اللي هم بيحبوها وتبدأ تشاركهم هذه الاهتمامات وتحاول أنت تتعرف عليها. 
So these are some things that are important to know if we're trying to understand motivation for autistic children. The first is that the spotlight of attention, so the thing they're typically focusing on is more on the physical world. So toys or materials, objects, they're less focused on the social things that might be going on around them. هم طبعا طبعا دي مجموعه من النقاط اللي بتفهمنا ازاي الدفاع بتتشكل عند الاطفال مشخصين بالتوحد اول واحده ان هم عاده ديما بيبقى تركيزهم على الاشياء الماديه مش الانشطه الاجتماعيه على الاشياء الموجوده في البيت الالعاب الاشياء المحسوسات اللي موجوده بشكل عام physical contact is usually motivating especially for little ones so trying to build in uh, lots of opportunities for physical play musical games, tickle games, running, bouncing, and swinging, having all of those building routines and play-based activities with those, you'll see a lot of the skills that need to be targeted will happen naturally when you're doing those types of things. The things that you can do is that you can do the things that you can do with some of the simple games, like for example, for example, for example, إن أنت تلعب معاه مثلا الألعاب الموسيقية الزغزغة إن أنت تي إنه يجري أو إنه يتنط في مثلا الكرة مثلا الفيجو نقعد عليها ويلعب عليها ويتحرك عليها أو مثلا المراجيح أو السوينج الأشياء البسيطة دي اللي أنت بتحاول تخلق عنده دافعية لهذه الأنشطة فتحاول أنت تشارك معاه في هذه الأنشطة وتخليه يستمتع بيها باللعب. We also want to make sure we're focusing on stimulating the child's interest, energy, positive affect, and approach. So these are all things that you could take data on or at least make note of. So you can see how good of a job you're doing, motivating the child and what changes might need to be made. It's important to you to help you to help the child and to help you to help the child and to help you to help the child and to help you to help the child. تحاول تشوف طبعا تاخد داتا من للاشياء المحببه للانشطه المفضله للطالب بحيث انت تكون عندك معلومات كافيه على الاشياء المفضله المحببه اللي عشان تستخدمها كنوع من ان انت تثري الدافعيه بتاعته وتثري ان هو يشارك معك الانشطه. Learners who are actively engaged will initiate and engage in spontaneous responding. So if you have children who aren't doing those things, they likely are not motivated. And more time needs to be spent in really understanding who they are and connecting with them before you try to move in to more structured or specific teaching on other skills. طبعاً الطالب اللي بينغمس وبيكون مندمج ومستمتع بالأنشطة هو اللي بيكون عنده تلقائية في ردود أفعاله تلقائية في الرد عليه كلما أنت كمعلم قدرت تخلق هذا الجو وهذه البيئة أثناء اللعب مع الطالب كل ما ده يعطي الطالب فرصة أكثر إن يكون في تلقائية عنده في ردة فعله معك في استجابته في تواصله معك. These last two bullet points are just suggestions of things you could try in order to build up motivation for your um, your learners. I'm not going to read through all of them, but there's object based ones with toys, and then there's more sensory based ones with songs and like physical touch and those types of things. Yes, and, and I think, doctor, that it's very important. Like for me, now I, I'm addicted to that toy game, toy shops. So whenever there's a new <laughs> toy, just go and buy it, any sensory. So, yes, you as a therapist should have all these items with you. يعني يا جماعه اللي انا عايز اقوله طبعا هي اخر سطرين مش هتكلم عنه لازم تكون معاك في الشنطه بتاعتك العاب متنوعه بلالين طبعا البابلز الحاجات اللي بتتعبى وتعمل اصوات الحاجات اللي ممكن تكون بتطير الاشياء الحاجات السنسوري حاجات كتير لازم يبقى معاك ثراء من الالعاب والانشطه اللي بعضها حسي حركه بيطلع اصوات بيطير بيتحرك ببابلز عشان تكون الجلسه فيها تفاعليه ما تكونش رتيبه او ممله So once you know what's motivating for the child, you are, well, actually at the same time, you need to be able to figure out how to draw the child's attention to you and make you a, a more important, like motivating part of the environment. خلاص انت الوقت عرفت طالب بتشتغل معاه بيحب ايه فخلاص ده الحاجة بقى اللي انت هتبدأ تركز عليها ان انت تبقى جزء ايضا من حبه لهذه الاشياء اذا هو بيحب ده نصرت انت لازم برضو تبقى معاك ديناصورات ومعك اشياء كثيره جدا تشاركوا الاهتمام. 
So one of the suggestions they make in the Early Start Denver model is to eliminate the competition. So remove items that compete with adult attention. I disagree, but I'll let you translate this first. <laughs> اوكي طبعا من الاشياء المهمه ان من اللي بيقولها في طبعا نموذج دنفر ان انت ما يكونش في تنافس ما بينك وبين الطالب تمام يعني يعني او مش تنافس سوري مش معناها تنافس الاشياء اللي ممكن تشتته او الاشياء اللي ممكن ان هي تشتت الطالب او ان هي ما تخلوش مركز معاك فتخلي ديما تحاول تخلي الانشطه ديما انه يكون مركز معاك ومتابع معاك. So... I'm, it doesn't mean you wouldn't ever do it, but I don't start there because eliminating the competition generally means I'm removing the joy from the child's life. So I don't want to be that person. طبعا مش معناها هنا ان احنا ان احنا نشيل يعني نشيل هذه الاشياء لا يعني انت تحاول تخلي البيئه دائما مبهجه بالنسبه للطالب وفي وفي انشطه كثيره متنوعه الطالب يحب ينغمس فيها. So first for me, I would be trying to figure out how I can make myself part of the competition. If the child is really into balloons or trains, whatever it is that they're interested in, I would try to be joining in with that and figure out how can I become part of this thing that you love so much. يعني إذا الطالب مثلاً بيحب البابلز أو بيحب البالون أو بيحب القطار أو بيحب عربية معينة أو ديناصورات معينة إزاي أنا اشارك هذا الاهتمام وايضا ان انا انغمس معاه في نفس النشاط بحيث ان ان اخلق لي جو من المتعه من خلال الاشياء المحببه لي واللي من خلالها انا اقدر برضه اعلمه كثير وكثير من المهارات. If that's not successful, then I usually try to have it where there's certain parts of the environment or certain times of the day where those things just aren't around so we can have moments where it's more likely to get adult attention. with the child, but I don't completely remove the item unless it's dangerous for some reason. One other reason why I try to keep the items present, besides the fact that the child is probably happier, is I want them to learn skills that will be beneficial in the real world. And if I remove the competition, they may learn to do things with me when those items aren't present. But as soon as they're in an environment where those items are present, all of the skills we've been working on probably won't show up because they'll be competing again. They need to learn how to navigate shifting their focus from this thing they love so much to other things in the environment as well. <laughs> بيئة نفسها تكون فيها كل الأنشطة الممكنة حتى وإن كان بعضها قد يكون قد يؤدي لأن الطالب مثلا يتشتت انتباهه وما يركز معاه لكن ال ال الهدف الأساسي إن هو يكون برضو عنده القدرة إنه ينقل انتباهه من مثلا من نشاط إلى آخر يستطيع يركز انتباهه على نشاط معين ينتقل من 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 من, من مثلا من شيء ممتع إلى شيء آخر ما ينفعش إن احنا نشيل كل هذه الأشياء لأن هو كده كده ممكن لاحقا يكون يقدر ان هو يحصل على هذه الاشياء، فكل ما كان الانشطه دي متوفره وان انا اقدر استطيع ان انا اخليه ينقل اهتمامه من نشاط الاخر ده يكون مفضل. Another way that you can become a play partner is to take center stage. So you want to provide a clear view of your face, be at eye level, and have the materials between you and the child. So you should really be sitting across from each other, whether you're on the floor, or at a table, having that being across from each other makes it a lot more likely that they'll pay attention to the to you sitting there with them. النقطة الثانية إن أنت تحاول تكون جالس في وضع مناسب للطالب في مستوى الرؤية بتاعته وطبعا تحاول إن أنت دائما تكون الماء أو الشيء اللي هو محبب للطالب يكون بينك وبينه بحيث إن الطالب يشاركك نفس الاهتمام مع الشيء المحبب اللي هو أنت ممكن يكون معاك. You want to refrain from getting in the child's face, though. So even if you're sitting across from them, you're not like putting your face right up in there. You're just sitting like a natural situation. طبعا مش معناه كده إن أنت بقى يعني جنب دخل وشك في لا يعني حاول برضو تخلي في مسافة بينك وبين الطالب. 
And then the last part of this is you want to make sure you're joining the child and adjusting based on the child's responding. So if the child is showing signs of stress, they don't even really want you sitting right there across from them. You'll need to work on that first. If uh, they uh -huh. are fine with you sitting there, you can start doing more with play. But I'll let you, sorry, go ahead. <laughs> yeah, thank you. طبعا لازم مهم تكون متاكد ان الطالب هيكون مشارك معاك وايضا هيكون ده مبني على رده فعل الطالب معاك وتواصله معاك وانت بتلعب معاه فبالتالي يبقى اهتمامه متعلق بالشيء اللي معاك وانت تقدر تحافظ على اهتمامه بهذا الشيء and then um, if they are okay with you sitting there then you need to see how much they let you be in their space so usually you'll have two items like you saw in the video if they have a car you'd have your own car and you might just work on imitating them at first you're not trying to take their stuff or touch their things or make them do anything you're just joining them in what they're doing طبعا مهم جدا ان انت لو انت بتشتغل مع الطالب لو هو مثلا مع عربيه وانت معك عربيه زيها ممكن تشتغل بيها على مثلا زي التقليد زي مثلا تحاول ان انت تعمل انشطه مشتركه ما بينك وبينه then while you're playing together, um, again, usually you're just observing and joining them and what they're interested in. And while you're doing that, you're just showing an interest. You're nodding, you're smiling, you're genuine and approving. You're not sitting there thinking about the all the targets you want to be working on. You're really observing the child and trying to authentically connect with them to express interest and show them, hey, I see what you're doing. I acknowledge that you're here and I want to be part of your life. طبعا وانت بتلعب مع الطالب لازم تحاول توصل له رساله ان انت بتشوف بتشاركه اللحظات الممتعه لو مثلا ماسك لعبه معينه بيلعبها لو ماسك مثلا شيء معين بيعمله حاول تحسسه ان هذا الشيء انت بتشاركه هذه المتعه تحاول ان انت تبين له ان الشيء ده بالنسبه لي إن أنت يعني بتشارك مع الاهتمام على أساس إنه يحس إنه اللعبة اللي بيلعبها دي أيضا هي محل اهتمام عندك مثل ما هي محل اهتمام عندي. Okay, and then um, when you're also doing this, you could add simple words and sound effects. That goes back to what we were talking about before, having those routines, having those consistent vocalizations that you're saying, so that you can start building in your skills once you have those routines developed. مهم جدا برضه انت شغال مع الطالب لو هو مثلا بيلعب مثلا بشيء معين لصوت انت تعمل هذا الصوت مع الطالب بحيث انت تبني معاه زي ما قلنا اهتمام مشترك تحسس الطالب ان الشيء اللي هو مهتم بيه انت ايضا مهتم بيه ومن خلال كده تقدر ان انت تقدر ان انت تبني هذه الشراكه يعني في انه بيستمتع بالانشطه ومن هنا تقدر تدرسه بقى اشياء مختلفه and then the last thing is to be helpful. So hand the child different objects that they're wanting. If they're trying to play with something, hold the item steady. If they want to open something, help open it. This will help establish you as a positive um, for them that you're helping them get access to these things that they're wanting. طبعا وشيء مهم جدا عشان الطالب دي ما تبقى انت مرتبط معاه بالشيء الايجابيه ان مثلا إذا شيء وقع منه تدوه له محتاج يفتح حاجة يفتحها تفتح حاله تساعده محتاج إن هو تمسك حاجة تمسك هذا الشيء ليه بحيث إن أنت تبقى ديما إيه عندك القدرة إن أنت بتساعده عشان تبقى أنت بالنسبة لي برضه أيضا شيء إيجابي أو شيء يعني رينفورسر بالنسبة لي يعني بمعنى آخر. Right. يكون وجودك ليه معنى بالظبط يس. Yes. That's okay. There's one last part. So I'm going to skip this slide because I don't have more, like you can just read it. I don't have anything to okay. add on this one. Yes. And I want to talk about the joint activity routine real quick before we do last questions. So, okay. so the joint activity routine is also from the Early Start Denver model. And this is how you set up your play-based intervention in a way that's child-led, but you're still promoting the development of the skills that they need to be working on. طبعا النقطة دي برضو من النقاط ان هم ازاي انت تعمل انشطة روتينية هي في الاساس الطالب هو اللي بيبادر والطالب هو اللي بيقود النشاط نفسه او هو اللي بيختار نشاط لكن انت ايضا في نفس الوقت من خلال اختياره لهذه الانشطة برضو تشتغل معاه في المهارات اللي هو المفروض انه يطورها 
So this is the framework of the joint activity routine. These are the steps that are involved in setting one up. So you have your, your step, first step is the beginning of the interaction. The child is choosing something to play with. أول خطوة طبعاً ده framework يعني زي إطار عام إزاي إن أنت تلعب مع الطالب بشكل أفضل وتبني مع معاه نشاط مشترك بينك وبين أول شيء إن أنت تشوف بداية الشيء تشوف الطالب إيه إيه الاختيار اللي اختاره الطالب إيه النشاط اللي اختاره الطالب. Then you develop a theme. You're going to go back and forth a few times based on the child's interest. So if the child wants to spin around in circles, you're just spinning around in circles with the child. If the child wants to roll a ball, you're just rolling a ball back and forth. تبدأ بقى تشارك هذا الاهتمام. تبدأ إن أنت تحاول إن أنت تشترك معه في نفس النشاط اللي معه. ولا مثلاً ماسك حاجة مثلاً بيلفها. ده ممكن تلفها معه. وبرضو بتحاول قدر ممكن أنت تشارك هذا الاهتمام. تشارك الطالب الاهتمام بالنشاط اللي بيقوم به. أنت تكون جزء من هذا النشاط. ولاحقاً أنت هتستطيع إن أنت تطور المهارات وتشتغل معاه من خلال اهتمامه بهذا النشاط. The next step is to have variation. So this is where the adult part comes in. You will do different things. So if the child is enjoying spinning around, you might um, jump up and down. <laughs> you do something different from what's happening within the routine. If they like rolling the ball, you might try bouncing the ball or rolling something else. بعد كده تنوين نوع النشاط حاول تغير النشاط لو مثلا بيلعب بال مثلا بالسيارة بيحركها ممكن أنت تحركها بسرعة وتوقفها تحركها بسرعة وتوقفها لو مثلا بيلعب بكورة معي ممكن أنت تنطط الكورة يعني تحاول تغير شوية شوية في النشاط أنت بتعمله بحيث أن أنت تبقى بتنوع النشاط اللي بيقوم بالطالب You can also vary it if they are really stuck on the thing they're doing so they just want to keep spinning You can vary it by doing other things like going slow, going fast um, singing a certain song or saying a certain chant. So you can do things that keep the activity the same, but still bring in a little bit of variability so that you're sharing that control. مهم جدا أيضا أنت تستخدم أنشطة ضد تطوير اللغة. تكلمنا عنها لاحقا. لو مثلا عربية تعمل صوت عربية. لو صوت نحلة أنت تعمل صوت نحلة. تحاول قدر الإمكان أن أنت تسمح بتطوير اللغة عن طريق الطالب من خلال المحاكاة اللي أنت بتعملها أثناء اللعب مع الطالب. The reason for doing the variations <laughs> are listed here. <laughs> just one minute, I will just. Yeah. Good. Okay. So um, when you do the variations, it helps make the activity last longer. Um, it allows. Can you, can, you, can you mute here, please, doctor? Because she's not muted. Yeah, I'm trying to find the thing. Yeah. Okay. Sorry. It's okay. <laughs> okay, so when um, when you are varying the activity, it helps to extend the activity so you can get longer time. I think that was one of the questions that Umami was asking about. Um, it also allows for more language to occur because they might start saying different things like fast, slow, stop, go, that type of thing. It increases flexibility because the child is starting to do things different than how they want to. And it can help maintain motivation because it's more novel and um, you're getting some more of that intermittent reinforcement doing some of their stuff, some of your stuff, and kind of going back and forth with that. كذلك كنت بتلعب حاول تخلي في مرونة أكتر في اللعب يعني زي ما قلنا مثلا ممكن تخلي مثلا لو بتعمل حاجة معينة ممكن تخليها تبقى بسرعة وبعدين تخليها بطيء شوية بعدين بسرعة بعدين بطيء شوية بتحاول إن أنت تبدأ تجذب الطالب للنمط اللي أنت بتلعب بيه وبالتالي تقدر تدرس المهارات حاجة تانية التنويع ده والتغيير اللي انت بتعمله أثناء اللعب بيحافظ على ان الطالب يكون عنده دفعية انه يلعب اكتر خاصة لو انت عباء حطيت بقى ايه لمسة فنية او خليت اللعب بطريقة ممتعة وغيرت نبرة صوتك او عملت اصوات او عملت فوكاليزيشن كل حاجات دي بتخلي برضو في موتيفيشن للمتعلم نفسه ويبقى النشاط ليه بالنسبة لي محبب او مفضل and then you have the closing when the child starts losing interest in the activity, you can close it. Or if you have a child that could do the same activity for hours, you might need to transition by giving them choices of other activities to engage in. طبعا والنهاية 
في ممكن تجد انه الطالب بدا يحس انه مل او ما بيجيش عنده رغبه في انه يكمل اللعبه تحاول انت تعطيه تشويس خيارات قد تحب تلعب دي ولا دي او تعطي خيارات انشطه تحب تشوف النشاط ده ولا النشاط ده فبالتالي ده هيساعدك ان انت تعمل ايه ان انت تبدا تنتقل الى نشاط اخر وبرضه تعمل نفس الفريم وورك من نفس الطريقه اللي احنا قلنا عليها كل الحاجات دي افكار ازاي انت تلعب بشكل صحيح تستخدم اللعب عشان تطور المهارات اللي عند الطالب All right, so yeah. there's a few more slides on joint activity routines, but we don't have time to talk about, but they're pretty detailed. So you should be able to read through those. If you have questions, feel free to email me and I'm happy yeah. to answer them. I also have someone that helps translate. So if if you send it in Arabic, I can just help have them help me with that. So don't worry if you yeah, yeah. need to do Arabic, that's fine. <laughs> yes, yes. Thank you so much, doctor. Um, we are so happy. Uh, about uh, the presentation and we we really we really learned a lot today i am sure that i will play very well in the coming days with my students after this amazing presentation <laughs> thank you keep in mind this yes. is just an overview there's only so much you can get in like an hour and a half but yes, did, yes. um did you want to tell me what hanin's question was real quick or do you have yes to... yes yeah i i want just let me read it because hanin uh, she just asked a question just let me go back for it. Hanin, yes, she said like, what if the child does, doesn't does want me to play with him with the same with this, with the same toys that he's playing? Like he's just want to have it for himself. So typically if you have your own set, that usually helps. Um, but if you, uh, if that, if they don't even like that, then I usually have to work on building up to where I'm playing with something nearby and it's more like parallel play, but I'm do trying to incorporate some things I know might be of interest to them so they can see, oh, that lady over there is pretty fun. I'm not placing any demands or expecting anything of them. The demand is having me be nearby if they don't want someone in their space. Yeah. So Zahanin, you, you hear the answer? Okay. Yes. So any other questions, please? Any does anybody we can take one more question because I know that we take more than one and a half hour. Okay. <laughs> yeah, okay. So please can you just repeat the answer again, doctor, please? Yeah. So mm. when you have um children who are engaged like don't really want people in their space if you work on building up that piece of it so it it depends on if they're if they're okay with you sitting there but they just don't want you doing the same thing they're doing then you might sit a little bit further away and play with something else that might be of interest to them but it's not the same thing that they're playing with and you're not placing any demands on them. You're just playing nearby to show them, hey, I'm a fun person. And the demand mm -hmm. is, I'm going to tolerate this person being here playing near me. Okay. هي بتقول لك إن مهم جدا نتأكد إن الطالب أصلا بعنده تحمل لإن في حد يكون قاعد معاه في نفس الأعلى. في طلاب ما بيكونش أصلا متقبل فكرة إن حد يقعد جنبه أو حد يشاركه النشاط. فأنت ممكن تقعد في مكان بعيد تحاول تلعب باي شيء اخر تحاول انت تلفت انتباهه للنشاط اللي انت بتعمليه تمام بحيث انت تظهروا لي ان انت بتعمل شيء ملفت للانتباه او شيء محبب بالنسبه لي بالاضافه الى ان مهم جدا جدا ان حضرتك ما تعطيش اي اوامر او تعطي تطلب منه اي طلبات في خلال هذا الوقت عشان ما يزيدش فرصه ان هو يحاول انه ينعزل اكثر And I, um, I mentioned this in another answer above but some of these types of questions I have Maybe we can do another presentation at some point in the future, a connected yes, relationships yes. training that goes into a lot of this in more detail because it's a pretty extensive process. People think, oh, you just play, <laughs> but it's not really yeah. that simple. There's a lot that goes into it. Yeah. So it's like, connection بينك وبين الطالب فده ان شاء الله يكون في في المستقبل يعني and we will be so happy doctor to have you again and to learn more from you 
of course. <laughs> so, yeah, thank you so much. We we take uh, lots of time from you today, but we I am sure that we everyone today learned a lot. I myself learned lots of things. I'm sure that tomorrow when I will go to my clients, I'm sure that I'm going to play very well with them. Uh, <laughs> Yes, this is because, yeah, playing is, play is very important and we can do lots of things and we can teach lots, lots of skills if we learn it, how to play well. So, Doctor, last question. Do you, do you recommend to us like a certain book or like serial of lectures, for example, to just more about play, how to use play or any resources that you suggest? Yes. Or for example, <laughs> if you have webinars yeah. or, or a course, um, yeah, I have quite not? a bit. I might just, I might just have to send it to you. And then if you want to email it out to the people that registered, I have quite yes. a bit of recommendations. Um, yes. And the one thing that I will caution, I guess, is a lot, even the play-based resources tend to get a bit too structured. <laughs> so mm. what I, okay. I like to do is focus on those skills that I went over at right. the beginning really just figuring out how can I set up opportunities in my sessions to see these things happening? Because those are the skills that our clients need to be learning. And if we get too focused in like really specifically following a protocol or a procedure, we start to lose sight of giving them the opportunity to just engage and communicate with us and build up those skills. يا yeah, هي طبعا بتقول ان في في مصادر كثيره جدا لكن مهم جدا النقاط الاوليه اللي ذكرت في المحاضره هي اللي احنا نركز عليها لان هي دي فعلا اللي بتساعد الطالب انه يلعب بشكل افضل سو دكتور ثانك يو سو ماتش اول اوف ذا بيبل هير اون فيسبوك اند هير اون زوم ذي ثانكس يو ا لوت فور اول يور ايفورت توداي فور ذيس اميزنج ليكتشر اي ام شور ذات وي ويل بي having you more in the future so we can can continue learning from you inshallah thank you so much doctor you're welcome i also just put in the chat for those that are on zoom the article i've mentioned because you can learn yeah, okay. pretty much any so of we, the the procedure the um interventions in there if you yeah. they all have their own trainings but for okay. me they all are kind of the same like they're very similar <laughs> so it's yeah. been more helpful to learn about what types of things i need to be um, promoting for my clients, not so much following up one specific intervention. Yeah, طبعا هي بتقول إن حطت بعض المصادر هنا في الشات على أساس نحن نقدر نطلع عنها أكثر. لكن هي دي ما بتقول إحنا بنركز على نحن نطور المهارات اللي بناء على اهتمامات الطالب أكثر. Okay, doctor, thank you so much yep. for your valuable yep. time. We learned a lot, we enjoyed a lot, and thank you so much for having this session. For, for the therapists, parents, and those who are uh, working in the field of AB in Middle East. Thank you so much, Doctor. We appreciate your kindness. We appreciate your valuable time also. Thank you so much. You're so welcome. Bye, everyone. Bye. Thank you.